Today we have a Caterpillar 272D Series 2 skid loader. It's made by Diecast Masters and it's in 116 scale. Now, 116 scale is pretty big for Diecast Masters. They really don't do a whole lot in 116 scale. Uh, they're starting to do some of the RC trucks, but that's really about it. There's a couple odds and ends, but nothing really modern. Uh, you know, as, as modern as this in 116 scale anyway. Now, Ertl does do skid loaders in 116 scale, but other than that, there's not a whole lot out there. So, by comparison, this is a little bit more detailed than what Ertl does, but it's about as functional. The only real difference is the attachments, which is really cool, but uh, overall, it is nice. Uh, it's very heavy. I mean, this thing weighs a metric ton. But it's cool that you feel quality, I guess, when you pick it up. Um, so anyway, just looking at it, you can see it's, it does have a lot of... Uh, I'll pull the bucket right off. It does have a lot of uh, little decals to it, which is nice. You can see the tie-down points there and the reflectors. Um, that is pretty cool. You know, little warning labels in there, little reflectors down here. You can see the bolt heads are silver, uh, which is pretty nice it's it's the neat little things like that that make the difference to me you see your remote lines here uh, on the side of the boom now the motor doesn't open up the hood panels doesn't open up or anything like that it almost looks like they should but they don't uh, now the cab is the skid loader does have a cab it is enclosed but the door does open and it's kind of tricky to get it opened up I wonder if you can open the cab down yeah you can and you can get a pretty good look inside there. The, the interior is very well done. You even have like uh, your post for the heat and the air conditioning vents, which is pretty nice. You got the lap bars that come down. You even have like the suspended seat. You can see that in there, which is really uh, very well done. The cab door is plastic, but that's really... And the, the cab is plastic too. But for the most part, almost the entire rest of this is metal. Um, now, it does come with a bucket, and that's your uh, attachment plate right there. That's plastic, so that's not very strong at all. But it is cool that it pops on and off. Now, the range of motion on this is pretty fair. It's surprisingly stiff. It's uh, really pretty, come on, pretty strong. And you can kind of see that uh, that, boo, that boom movement as it comes up. It's got little pegs here where it stops it. But it comes up so far, and then it moves the whole thing forwards. And the idea is that it makes it easier to load like the center of a dump truck rather than just you load the sides. Uh, that, that's kind of the idea behind it. And the range of motion on the bucket is okay. It, it could certainly be better, but I think it's certainly definitely passable. The only thing that does kind of bother me a little bit is the cylinders are pretty stiff. And with these plastic tabs here, I mean, you can see how that's already pulling up a little bit. It's not going to take a whole lot of pressure to just pull those tabs right off. Uh, so it's something to think about <laughs> if you uh, try to move it around. So it does come with a couple different attachments. Uh, one is a set of pallet forks. I mean, who has a skid loader without a set of pallet forks? So that's that's nice. Um, everything, for the most part, just uh, I say it flips right in there. But of course, I'm having trouble now. There we go. Uh, doesn't really lock into place or anything like that, but it just kind of pops on there. So you got a pallet force, you got an auger, and this is one of the coolest things that I think uh, about this set is that it the attachments are actual cat models. Uh, like you have model numbers. Like this is an A26 A26B auger. Like that's just cool. Now it is pinned in place down here. I don't think you can pull this out because you can see that kind of uh, um, it's kind of pinned in place there. Because it looks like it should be able to swivel like it normally does and you pin it for transport or storage or whatever. But it, it's permanently fixed in place. And the other thing you have is a broom. This is pretty cool. It's just like little rubber, uh, I guess, tines or whatever. But 
it's really really well done like you got the warning labels there the little tie down uh again more warning labels the cat the model number it's just cool and it does have little little stops on it so you can kind of pose it in different places which is neat i really like this uh this skid loader i i think it's cool i love that it comes with the attachments i think it's really well done um I mean, yeah, it could have a little bit more functionality, I guess. It'd be it'd be nice if you could see the motor in there, like the hood opened up. That would be cool. But uh, I think it's really pretty good. Is it $100 good? I don't know. I mean, you're not you're not getting a whole lot more than what Ertl puts out for 50 bucks. So it, I think it's kind of hard to, to throw $100 at it and say, yeah, this is uh, totally worth it. But it is a nice model. I think it is pretty well done. I think the attachments are very cool. Now, you can get a, uh, a track skid loader. Uh, I think it's a 297, or it's a multi-terrain loader. God help you if you ever confuse the two. Uh, the, the purists out there will tell you, oh, multi-terrain loader is not the same as a track skid steer. It's heresy. <laughs> it's a track skid loader, whatever. Now, I, I can tell you the adjustment... Uh, like the the tension adjustment for a multi-terrain loader is vastly different from a track skid loader and you will hate yourself in the process and, and you, it's it, it's needlessly uh over complicated anyway so overall this is a pretty nice model now i have run the 272d not a series 2 but uh 272d for sure and i gotta tell you it really is a nice machine it's got good weight to it. It's got power out the gazoo. It's a dirt digging monster. And it's comfortable. Oh my gosh. Like the, the seat is nice. The the heat and the air conditioning. It's really well designed. It's comfortable. Like it's just as slick and smooth as you could ever want the machine to be. That being said, I certainly didn't pay the bill for it. You know, uh. These things are really expensive. And, you know, it's... Bobcat really isn't the standard anymore for skid loaders. They're just not. Like, they, they make a fine machine, but they're really not the standard. Uh, to be completely honest, I think Caterpillar is really kind of taking that over as far as just, like, the, the standard of a nice machine. Like, you got Creature Comforts just coming out of the woodwork. Uh, and it's they're nice machines to run they really are they're they're strong they're heavy they'll, they'll do anything you want them to do that being said once they start to break down and you have problems with the electronics and something goes wrong and you need to replace some seals they are a nightmare uh these these cats <laughs> you will go broke trying to fix a cat if you were on a limited budget uh, they're they're just they're so complicated to a fault. So uh, if you want to rent one, go ahead, man. You're gonna have a good day. But if you want to buy one, you gotta have some deep pockets. In all honesty, if you want to keep it for 10, 15, 20 years, it's 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 gonna eat you alive uh, through through the repairs. Anyway, just a little tidbit from my own personal experience. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Uh, if there's something you want to see, let me know. I might just have it. Uh, as always, thanks for watching Maryland Construction Diecast. And if you want to see more, please subscribe.